Hey all, Heber here. So uh, we uh, made it to the November update here. And uh, although I've had the information for a few days, I always wait to the actual announcement to do these videos because usually there's stuff that's not included in the kind of draft documents the CCs get early. Uh, actually, this time it seems like there's nothing that's been left out, but you never know. So uh, I usually try to do it this way here. So uh, if you're too lazy to watch the whole video, then I'll just quickly go through it here. Um, tier 8, we're getting the British and French uh, installments here, and it's one of each. It's a destroyer, a cruiser, and a battleship for each nation. And uh, I'll go through the details later in the video. Then the campaign that we already know is uh, the Hayate, like a tier 8 Japanese destroyer, which I couldn't be less interested in, to be honest. Black Friday coming, that's always good. And then we have some pirate content, I'll get into the details later, but it's basically two new commanders, which is sorely needed. Uh, like a legendary uh, British destroyer daring bureau project, very interesting. I will actually try to research that fairly quickly because I think that's a great ship. And then we have one-on-one -on -one ranked coming back, which is awesome. And then there's a few extras, which I'll go through in the end of the video. First up, we'll look at the new tier 8s, and unfortunately, we are not getting Italy, which is kind of weird because there's only two nations, but I mean, two is better than nothing, right? Uh, so for Britain, we get the destroyer Jutland and the cruiser Neptune and the battleship Temerary. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I pronounce it. France, we get the Mogador uh, destroyer, the Saint Louis cruiser, and the Alsace battleship. So they're all, uh, you know, Decent ships that I'm actually looking forward to, all of them, really. So uh, the Brewing Storm campaign, as we already know, is Hayate, Tier 8, British, no, not British, Japanese destroyer. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. I'm not very interested in this ship, to be honest. We already have Yudachi, we already have Shimakaze, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just not very interesting to me, to be honest, but I'm sure some destroyer lovers are going to love it. All right, let's look at the Black Friday offerings. And of course, there's going to be lots of discounts and, you know, the Black Friday boxes, which are always good. Lots of good stuff in there, especially Universal Commendations. Very easy to get. I think it's like almost one in 10 boxes has that. So uh, anyway, we're also going to get Dante Alighieri, uh, an Italian battleship with sap shells. It's going to be interesting. And then we get the Ibuki B, and uh, we get the Duca Dosta B, and we get Set 39 B. And uh, if you know this channel, you know I like Set 39, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see how different that is, if it's different at all. And lastly, we're going to get the battleship uh, Bismarck with upgraded secondaries, and uh, that'll be interesting as well. So, uh, quite interesting this uh, Black Friday thing. This here actually. So uh, I have personally been screaming and yelling for new commanders for pretty much the whole year, <laughs> more or less, and we haven't gotten any. We got a few like tech tree commanders which are boring, I want premium commanders. Now we're finally getting two, and it looks like two piratey, yeah, guys, I don't know, I don't know anything about them, but uh, uh, they won't be available until the 1st of December, which is like a long time away, I think. Um, so uh, that's a bit of a bummer. But at least we're getting new commanders and uh, hopefully they have some good base perks so we can, you know, make some interesting builds because that's what I want. And I have plenty of resources, so uh, let's see how these turn out. But yeah, that's definitely a plus. And finally, we're getting ranked one-on-ones back. Like it doesn't say which tiers, unfortunately, um, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, that's that's fun. Ranked one-on-one, -on -one, one of the most fun things I've ever done in this game, and I'm so happy it's coming back. So uh, you know, big thumbs up to Wargaming for this edition. And uh, like I said in the beginning, Daring Bureau, interesting. I'm going to research that for sure um, because I think. Uh, I think Daring would be a very nice destroyer for me. Uh, now that we don't have a legendary German destroyer yet, still waiting for that, but in the meantime, Daring will do. 
And as usual, we have some balance changes. I'm not going to go through all of them here because none of them are really earth shattering or anything like that. They're all like sort of, you know, safe and average and nothing really too amazing there. But uh, there's quite a bit of them. So uh, look through the patch notes if you want to know every detail, right? What I am going to spend some time on is this, the modernization changes, because this is something that I've been asking for for years. And uh, it is for Wargaming to, you know, put a little bit more effort into the uh, actual upgrades on the ships. Because uh, that's another area where you could, you know, open up a bit and open for more upgrades, different upgrades, you know, like maybe even different grades of upgrades, who knows. Uh, but this is like a baby step in the right direction. And uh, this, basically what it does is uh, like main battery 2, the upgrade that no one picks besides myself on my agile cruisers. Uh, it's actually getting uh, getting really good now. Like uh, the turn time is uh, upped from 15 to 20 percent. That's actually a massive increase, and the debuff to reload is removed. So uh, that means for me personally, I'm gonna get a blanket uh, five percent decrease in my um, reload time for almost all my agile cruisers next updates. That's gonna be a massive update for me personally. I realize most people have the main battery mod 1 on their ships and it didn't make sense on some ships. I have it myself on Hipper and uh, I think I have it on Shah Martel as well, but that's it. Other than that, I have main battery 2 and uh, that's what I'm saying. For me, this is going to be a huge change because I'm going to lose that debuff to my reload on almost all my cruisers, including Edinburgh, which is going to be awesome actually, <laughs> and Atago also. So um, yeah. That's going to be interesting and of course the uh, turn time bonus is increased so that means that um, it's like if you put this thing on HIPAA you're going to have a very very fast uh, turret turn if you put an, uh, an agile build on HIPAA with Ingenious for example but uh, I will look into more uh, details on this when uh, the patch actually lands uh, which will be next week. Next up, another nice upgrade, not super necessary, but nice nonetheless. And uh, it's just the fact that you can pick your own port now. So you can choose between Fjords, the Norwegian one, and Nagasaki, the Japanese, Marseille, the French, and Ocean, I don't know, that's like Ocean, <laughs> and then Hamburg, the German one. So there's something for everyone there, really. And um, I'm probably gonna go with Nagasaki myself, or possibly Ocean, don't know that yet. Those are my favorites. I'm not going to go with Fjords, I know a lot of people love that, but I'm really sick and tired of that one. We've had it almost all of this year, really, <laughs> so I'm happy to, uh, you know, just settle on Nagasaki, I'm pretty sure. So this is a nice addition, not super necessary, but still, like, it's something that people have been asking for for a while, so, uh, I mean, not going to complain, so, uh, yeah, happy it's there. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to show you this quality of life improvement here, which is the rudder position while in the quick commands menu, because uh, that's something that's been really annoying for the whole time I've played this game. Is uh, like if you're in the middle of the turn and you have to send a quick command using like the pizza wheel, um, like while you're in that wheel, like your rudder returns to a neutral position, meaning that if you're in the middle of a turn, that turn will stop. That, that's why you have to be really quick when you go into the pizza wheel and. Uh, at least now you don't have to be so super quick and uh, that's a good thing that really is a good thing so uh, yeah very nice addition here i mean this is a pretty good update overall i mean the campaign ship is super boring i have zero interest in that but at least we're getting one-on-one -on -one ranked and uh, we're getting some real nice updates to the game including the ports and uh, you know the the upgraded uh, main battery too that's very important um, Thing. I think it's very small in the patch notes, but I think it's the most important thing in this update. And uh, of course, like all the little quality of life improvements here, like the rudder uh, thing. So quite a good update, actually, at least uh, probably in the top three this year, um, <laughs> which really doesn't say a lot, but it's still one of the better updates. Um, so I'm quite happy about it. And uh, of course, I'll go through the details once the update lands next week, and uh, we'll see how it changes uh, especially the Agile Cruisers, really, with the improved turret rotation and uh, decreased reload. That's going to be very interesting to see. 
So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick little run through here. And of course, you can just uh, read the patch notes yourself if you want all the details. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and see you out there.